From Wall Street to Main Street, this is LA Late. It's a major night of a four stimulus chat dates of 2022 as your U.S. economy goes into a spiral of confusion tonight. We'll be looking at the breaking news as retail surged in some regards today. Major beats from Macy's and, and William Sonoma. And why did they surge after a week in which we saw Target and Walmart plummet? We'll be looking at the new GDP numbers released minutes ago, and they signal that the growth of the U.S. economy is shrinking. Meantime, also released by the Department of Labor are the latest numbers on unemployment, and they were not good. Next stop, inflation, as the CBO and the Department of Labor signal that the recordings of this channel are correct. We're dropping to 4% inflation later this year, and the GDP is going to 1.5% by 2014, 2024. The latest details on that front tonight, but the great news is that a four stimulus check has landed in every U.S. state, and in this recording, we're gonna go over the fourth stimulus check update of 2022. A four stimulus check has landed in every U.S. state, and we're gonna go over those incredible checks in tonight's recording. How do you get them? Step one, subscribe. Step two, become a member, and step three, Get that incredible newsletter Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Over this one-hour broadcast, we're going to go over those four stimulus checks in every U.S. state. Then we're going to turn to the housing market crash of 2022. What's going on on that front tonight? The stock market crash as well. The big question marks and what could be coming. The recession of 2023 and 2024. What you need to know. As a big confusion hits left and right on a night in which data was mixed, you had great retail sales, and you had poor retail sales. You had a major miss on the, on the employment front. And then we have breaking news tonight about student loan debt forgiveness from the White House. Major news on the Build Back Better Act. Major news on six stimulus, and major news on the price of gasoline going into this Memorial Day weekend. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, you're watching the most watched show for financial news in prime time. It's evening zone on LA, and over this one-hour broadcast, we're going to give you the financial news, the projections, and the checks in your hand. It's a force to must check like update like you've never seen before, with a lot of major breaking news happening in the last few minutes. It's evening zone LA, and the big news starts right now from Santa Monica, California, as evening zone LA gets underway. Good evening, everybody. About it. It's a beautiful night from Santa Monica, California tonight. We're going to go over that four stimulus check in every U.S. state coming up later in this recording. Then we'll be turning also to that housing market crash of 2022. What's happening tonight? The stock market crash as well. Stocks are real up tonight. They're majorly up. The Dow's up 600 points and the Nasdaq's up 350. Meantime, we'll be turning to those recessionary concerns and why that's important as we go into a big weekend as the price of oil surges to 118 a barrel. Inflation numbers coming at 4% for the Department of Labor. We'll be going over that breaking details. Then, of course, we'll be turning to the latest on less GDP growth. This is where we expected these numbers to come in. The breaking news on these numbers tonight. And then the retail surges and falls. Some retail numbers were major meets today, major beats, and others were major misses. Why is the market getting so confused by this data? And why is the reporting so inconsistent among the corporations. We'll analyze it for you over this one-hour broadcast. Stay to the very end because we have big checks for you in this big four stimulus check update of 2022 tonight. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, this evening, thank you, and thank you for joining me on a big show tonight. A four stimulus check has landed in every U.S. state, and I'm going to get that check for you later in this recording. Why has this check landed? By executive order by Joseph Biden, not announced by White House, not announced by press or broadcast or print media, really just announced in press releases. And I found those checks for you. As millions of viewers of this channel back in March said, L.A., do you have a four stimulus check for you? I looked and I found it. And those checks, great checks for you, 
are coming up later in this video. Single, married, with children, without children, on benefits, not on benefits, every U.S. state, they're great checks, upwards of $80,000. They're coming up later in this video. First up, though, is the Build Back Better Act which would give you additional checks on top of that, fifteen dollars to $80,000. The negotiations are underway as two men are in that tow truck driving the tow hitch over the finish line, and they are not Joe Manchin, and they are not Joe Biden or Bernie Sanders. They are Joe Manchin and Chuck Schumer. Those two individuals tonight are really trying to get this really done quickly, and why? Because they feel the pressure of this U.S. economy across the board. The pressure of the U.S. economy is crushing a lot of elements, and that is, of course, inflation and more. Joe Manchin and Chuck Schumer, where their latest updates tonight. They say they're going to get it done. Why? Because you're in need of the money. Two, they believe they can get it done. Three, they like each other a lot. Joe Manchin and Chuck Schumer are generally perceived as moderate Democrats, not progressives. And so then what provisions would survive for the Build Back Better Act when it becomes law in likely the next few days or weeks? The provisions would likely remove anything for Medicare expansion and anything for uh, for the element of paid leave. Other than that, the three clauses and three add-ons, let's take a look at them and see which provisions Joe Banchin has made very clear over the last year and a half he would not support and which are likely to fall out from the Build Back Better Act. Three clauses and three add-ons. He's never said anything negative about that MSC, $2,000 a first month, $1,000 or after for up to six months. He has never said anything negative about the $25,000 for the purchase of your first home. He'd likely support this because he's probably unhappy with the rising mortgage rates surging from 3 to 5%, making it harder to buy a home. But this provision likely to fall out. $250 billion of free home health care for seniors and people on disabilities. Yes, this is a very anti-Joe Manchin provision. He would not do a provision like this because it increases expenditures for Medicare. Now let's turn to the individual clusters. Let's see the fate of those provisions. Hazard pay. One more year of the earned income tax credit from the EIC established under the third stimulus American Recovery Act. Would it survive? Yes. $4,000 to elder care. $4,000 to care for young children. Would they survive? Likely unless they're fundled, funded by the expansion of Medicare. Nutrition, yes, they would survive. $12,500 towards the purchase of a new electric vehicle. Yes, so long as no other energy issues are implicated. Remember, Joe Manchin's head of the Energy Commission on the Senate. What about home repairs? Yes, that would likely survive. That also is in the first cluster. But when we turn to the second cluster, it's more like a bloodbath. Paid leave, absolutely coming out. This is a provision. Joe Manchin has made emphatically clear he will vote against it in all walks of life. And that provision is likely to come out. The home repairs has already been removed. That is <laughs> a stimulus check in every U.S. state. It's coming up later in this recording. Let's turn to that third cluster. Okay, here is where the casualties start. Third cluster has has checks for farmers, that would survive. Checks for free internet, that would survive. But everything for seniors coming out. Dental, vision, hearing, all coming out. Those are all expansion of Medicare, which Joe Banchin does not like. Lowering the eligibility age of Medicare from 65 to 55, yes, that would come out. It's only the Medicare workaround plan that provides an insured people in 12 Republican holdout states, insurance, that would survive. That is a Raphael Warnock, Joe Manchin provision they put together in the Senate. The other reason why the Build Back Better Act will get done is because of Warnock. Yes, Warnock is that Georgia senator, one of two, elected last fall. And if you watch this channel at the time, it was a big issue because they had to get Warnock and Ossoff elected to the Senate out of Georgia for the Democrats to take the Senate. Now, the Democrats more than ever want to get Build Back Better Act done. Why? To secure that Warnock is re-elected in the fall. He is facing Herschel Walker, the Republican primary winner this week. And the way they can win against Herschel Walker is giving you the Build Back Better Act. Fifteen dollars to $80,000 of gradual shop checks in there. And we're going to go over more about these details and the elements at issue later in this recording. But here's what you need to know is that there's no time or place to wait for the Build Back Better Act, which won't give you a check today or tomorrow. What will give you a check this week is the four stimulus checks in every U.S. state. Yes, we're going to go over those big checks later in this recording. You need money right now? 
not five weeks from now, not five months from now. Well, guess what? I got it for you. It's coming up later in this recording. A four stimulus check in every U.S. state. Step one, subscribe to this channel. And step two, become a member. And step three, stay for the second half of this video as we go over those big checks in every U.S. state. The four stimulus check is great, but what's also at issue is the other elements that is impacting Build Back Better Act. The stock market crash, the housing market crash, and also the looming recession. All these developing details give support for the Build Back Better Act. Why? Because the Build Back Better Act is based upon poor economic data. And that poor economic data starts with the, the big numbers coming out of Wall Street this week. Let's start with the big numbers tonight on those retail sales. These numbers on the retail sales show you that it's not all apples are the same deliciousness. <laughs> the retail sales numbers that came in today were from Macy's. Macy's, Dollar Tree, and Dollar General. And today we learned even more than we learned yesterday that the way corporations are battling the supply chain disruption is managing inventory. When they manage inventory, then they're winning. When they don't, they're not. It was three weeks ago we were wondering if the bad numbers from Walmart and Target were the result of consumer spending or more the result of supply chain. Not consumers, but supply chain. Tonight is starting to sound like it's a lot of supply chain and less about consumers. More about that in a second. What happened today? Macy's reported corporate earnings, and it was a major beat. It was a major beat. While the revenue came in right at the money at four at five point three five billion compared to a five point three three billion estimate, it was the earnings, the bottom line, that was a major beat. Look at this number. It was expected to be eighty two cents a share. It came in at one oh eight a share. Why was Macy's such a major beat? Here is what happened. The Macy's department stores, of course, also own Bloomingdale's, showed that they were able to manage the inventory better than Walmart, Tar Target, Kohl's, and Abercrombie and Finch last week. What happened then? Last week, we learned that a lot of those major retailers bought the products. The products were shipped. They did get the products, but they came late. They were out of season, and suddenly no one wanted to buy winter clothes when it got hotter outside, suddenly they had extra inventory. They did not manage their inventory well. Yesterday, what did we learn? This is where it gets really interesting. Yesterday, we had Dick Sporting Good on one side, and we had Nordstrom reporting on the same day. Dick Sporting Good, outdoors, camping, major miss. Numbers were horrible, and that stock fell dramatically. Why? People aren't camping. They're back at work. Nordstrom's. People are back at work. They need to buy that new professional suit. Their number's way up, Nordstrom. So today, Macy's was a Nordstrom play, way up. People were back in the stores, we learned from Macy's, feeling the product ready to look snazzy for work. That was the Macy's-Nordstrom equation. But here's a surprise. This is potentially why tonight the numbers on Wall Street tonight were so strong. If you saw the end of the, today's trading, boy, you're probably wondering, Ellie, what happened? Today, we ended with the Dow up 600 points or 2%. The Nasdaq up 350 points or 3%. Why was the change of the market so dramatic? Likely because of these two numbers, Dollar General and Dollar Tree. Where do you go to buy there? Dollar items. <laughs> That's how it works. And the concept is that you would have thought that their numbers would be bad, like Walmart or Target, that they're pulling in lower-income individuals. No. They manage the inventory better, and their stocks are up 14% each today. What else did we see today on those big corporate earnings? Well, let's look at the surprises across the board. Those corporate earnings showed us that it's not all situations for everyone. NVIDIA, the tech stock company, fell 4% after they could not manage the component parts, parts in their computer items. Snowflake, which is a company that has not posted earnings, fell astronomically, down 14% today. And then we had other companies which really just surged on managing that supply chain risk. Those numbers that came in today dramatically, of course, were Dollar General up 10%, Dollar Tree up 13%, Alibaba up 5%. Twitter was up slightly on news that Elon Musk will invest more. And then William Sonoma, this was a big surprise. William Sonoma, you would have thought it was a stay-at-home play where Americans were just buying espressos in 2021, but not in 2022. Not the case. William Sonoma reposted such enormous earnings that they surged and gave guidance for the rest of the year. Wow. 
So it looks like it's an interesting week where if you manage the supply chain disruption as a corporation, you'll have great numbers. What about on the consumer side? And why is the market up tonight? The market is up tonight with the concern that there may be mixed messaging across the board. Stock market crash of 2020, yes. Tonight, not so much. Why does it pivot so quickly, this market? And why did it look like the stock market crash of 2020 was going to be the, 2022 is going to be the narrative of this channel every single hour of this week? Well, here is what Zachary Hill, head of portfolio strategy and Horizon Investments, says tonight. My view is that the rally today is a technical trade and not an overall trend line. It's too early to focus on the, infl focus away from inflation and focus on growth. What's at issue is that he basically says it's not geared by fundamentals tonight. Tighter financial conditions suppressing demand in the real economy through which the Fed hopes to cool inflation is at issue. Until that changes, we're going to see downward trend lines. So he believes that the demand for consumer spending is still not there. And who else also agrees with him? Who else also agrees with him on that front is, of course... The Department of Labor. The Department of Labor released their numbers this morning, and this is big for you folks, because guess what? They co-signed everything I've been saying about GDP growth, about inflation, about unemployment, and about this U.S. economy. Let's look at these big numbers. Again, this all supports the Build Back Better Act, and it also potentially supports alleviating a little bit of pressure from <laughs> uh, Jay Powell. The GDP numbers were not as strong as many expected. The Dow Jones were expecting first quarter GDP to decline at 1.3%. It fell 1.5%. Whoa. And this came from the Department of Labor today that announced that new jobless claims surged to 210,000 new jobless claims. Uh, while that's more than the week before, a little bit less than the week before, it is still too high. Now, what about that consumer spending? Here is where the data gets very confusing. The consumer spending showed that, in, it, that individual consumption increased 3.1% month to date compared to what estimates were supposed to be at 3.1%. What does this GDP number tell for you, us, Build Back Better Act, your stimulus, and recession? One. It shows that this economy is shrinking. It shows that this economy is shrinking. At the economy is shrinking, you need Build Back Better Act. You need more stimulus. Number two, it shows we're getting closer to recession than initially many of us thought. Number four, it basically indicates that everything I've been reporting on this channel is accurate. And moreover, all the worries I have are very, very much true. Number one, I had said all this week that I was going to watch for that unemployment number released today. I did not want over to 1,000. It came at 210. This is a problematic number. The week before the pandemic, in March of 2020, unemployment claims were at about 180, then shot to 200. Then when the pandemic started, we went to 1 million. After the pandemic in early 2021, we went to about 188,000 new jobless claims per week. We don't want to see these jobless claims surging back to 200,000. This is not good. This is before the Walmart part of the equation kicks in. What's that? Walmart said this week, we are not moving the merchandise and we have too many employees on the floor of the store. It's basically the language that makes you worried the layoffs could be coming. We already know from Uber this week, we already know from Lyft last week or, or in ver reverse, that they're not increasing hiring. Snap on the technology side. So there's only hiring 500 people more per year this year. That means people are going to get laid off. Will there be a job in replacement? Well, the point of the second issue at hand is this GDP number. GDP first quarter declined 1.5% year to date, says Department of Labor overnight. Is that recession, Allied? Well, it depends on how you define recession. Most analysts define recession as two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth, meaning it's zero or a negative number. Some analysts gauge it as two consecutive quarters in which the growth shrinks. Well, this is shrinking growth. So if you go by the second definition, that's one quarter. Could the second quarter be another shrinkage across the board? Interesting. 81% of Americans now believe we're going to recession for two years. But I've been reporting since February this year, the only U.S. broadcaster in America to report that we're going into recession starting in January of 2020. 23. Let's look at those CBO numbers that came in last night because this is very important. These CBO numbers from the Congressional Budget Office give us indication of how weak this economy is and how the president has to move quickly 
on the Build Back Better Act. Let's look at those numbers last night. The G CBO, which is the Congressional Budget Office, a nonpartisan organization, said that the GDP will shrink to 2.2% by next year and 1.5% by the year after that. Now, that is a shocker because we were at 6.9% GDP growth in April, missing the 7.1% target. How quickly are we shrinking? That's the question mark when we look at the recession. And that is why Congress is racing to get this Build Back Better Act done, as the U.S. economy is shrinking dramatically across the board. Now, the other issue at hand is, of course, the issue about inflation. That issue about inflation is really getting interesting tonight. It started last night when the CBO also gave us guidance about where inflation is going to track by the end of the year. You know what it is. You know the part of the equation at issue. It starts with the question of mark of where will inflation land? Will it be 4%? Will it be 2%? Or will it be another number? It started in spring of this year when I said that inflation will come down from 8% now to 4% later this year. And Jay Powell throughout that entire time, even this month, likely even next month, has said that he's getting inflation down to 2% later this year. I say he's never going to get it down to 2%. He's going to get it down to 4%. So what did the Congressional Budget Office say in statements last night? That inflation will come down to 3.8% by the end of the year. There you go. The CBO also confirming my reporting. Let's recap. Summer last year, I said that inflation will come at 8% and then stay at 8% and not come down. Jay Powell at the time, at the head of the Federal Reserve, said inflation was going to be 2 to 3%. He was wrong. He said it was going to be temporary. He was wrong. Now he says it's going to go down to 2%. CBO saying he's wrong. I say 4%. CBO says 4%. Next, when we look at the GDP number, I said that the GDP will shrink dramatically from 7.1% projected from April, came in at 6.9%, all the way down to zero, and then to negative territory next year. What does the Department of Labor say tonight? 1.2 percent by 2024 so we're really on the money with the projections here on this channel the question mark is the bill back better act yes those democrats really need to get the bill back better act because the inflationary pressure is being felt by the lowest income individuals the households the people on benefits and that is why joe biden needs to make that swap and call it to inflation more on that and later in this recording the ability to get that ss300 that's coming up later in this recording also coming up later in this recording is a big shocker, a big shocker, as we have a lot of things crashing left and right. What is crashing tonight? Well, we have the crashing of the stock market progressively. And it, while today was up, dramatically up, we are far from over on our downward spiral. In the second half of this video, we're going to go over how low we're going to go on this market as the continued bear market continues left and right. What do you need to know going into the second half of this video? That the lack of growth as U.S. economy will be felt as we shrink and the stock market crash continues to hit us. The housing market crash really at issue. That's coming up in the second half of this video as well. What about the recessionary concerns? Yes, that the recession's kicking in, but when would you feel it and how would you feel it? All the latest details on that front in the second half. But out of nowhere, big surprise tonight, on that student loan debt forgiveness, for over a week I've been asking why. Why the wait on the student loan debt forgiveness? We have that huge quote detail on this channel since last weekend where an insider says that the president set to announce a major student loan debt forgiveness in just a few days, that he is meeting with individuals who are advocates for student loan debt, and that announcement's coming. It has not yet come this week, so why did he meet with them and not have an announcement? Tonight, the analysis by one publication is fascinating. It says that the president has a determination, doesn't want to announce it, because he thinks he's going to really anger people. What do I think is going to happen? He wants to do $10,000. He wants to do $10,000, and that apparently has infuriated certain organizations, which I'm not going to name names, but you can certainly look them up online. Certain organizations have met with the White House this week and said $10,000, quote, will be a slap in the face. Why? Because the average student loan debt forgiveness, the average student loan at the moment is $30,000. So you're only forgiving 30% of people's loans. But the White House has always said, since his campaign trail, he's going to do 10000 He never agreed to do 50000 
Liz Warren, Chuck Schumer tonight are still saying do at least 50,000. He says nope, but he's also saying not how much. My takeaway of the situation is that Joe Biden needs to do the 10,000 and run with it. Why? The implication is that people are going to be upset one way or the other. The president has already forgiven student loan debts for individuals disabled after graduation, went to work in the nonprofit or public sector. I think the place in which the bite came out of student loan debt forgiveness is when Liz Warren's provision got done by Joe Biden. Her pitch on student loan debt forgiveness was that people's debts were procured by fraud, were were fraud procured by the university against the students. Well, Joe Biden wiped away those debts two weeks ago. Those debts have now been forgiven. So the only left debts are everyone else. And that is why. $10,000, I think, is what Joe Biden will do. He needs to do it and not worry how much backlash he's going to get from uh, from individual groups or progressive organizations. He needs to just do the $10,000 and run with it. Now, Joe Biden has been decisive on other items, and the other items he has been decisive on uh, is that you need stimulus checks. And how did he do that? He took out provisions from the Build Back Better Act, from the second cluster, from the third cluster, and did them by executive order. Yes, starting in March, the President of the United States started doing executive order of forced stimulus checks. And now those forced stimulus checks are in every U.S. state. In the second half of this video, we're going to go over these incredible checks for you. Step one, subscribe to this channel. Step two, become a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, Calcino VIP. And in the second half of this video, we're going to go over these huge checks for you. Let me explain what you're watching on this channel tonight. This is Allied. This is a channel in which I deliver financial news about where this economy is, where this economy is going. And apparently, I've been really on the money for my financial projections. It's important to know where you're going as economy, ahead of the game, not after the fact. Plus, I get people money. Not a little sums of money, big sums of money. Back in March of this year, viewers of this channel said, LA, they haven't gotten that Bill Back Better Act done. Can you get me a forced stimulus check? So I looked high and low to get my viewers of this channel a forced stimulus check. And I found it, them, lots of them, in every U.S. state. I named them check A, B, and C, and in this recording, I'm going to get you those checks. There's no one more who cares about you. There's no one more who gets you more money. $50 million since this channel launched in April of 2020. And tonight, we're going to go over all those incredible checks for you. Single, married, young, old, with children, without children, retiree, not retiree, SSI, SSDI, veterans, renter or homeowners, it's all for you. Organized, easy, and explained in the second half of this video. You're not going to see this anywhere in the landscape of broadcast media. This is why this is the number one show for financial news in prime time. In the second half of this video, we're going to go over what we learned from Jay Powell on those interest rate spikes and why you need to pivot off of anything that's flexible based like credit card debt. All the latest projections on what Jay Powell is likely to do in the second half of this video. Then as you go into a Memorial Day weekend, get ready for price of gasoline to go up, but that's just the start. Gasoline is going to go even higher, and I have the latest projections on why, but the great news as a deal is in the works. All those details coming up in the second half of this video, but first, here's a little bit about the community page. If you haven't become a member, make sure you become a member right now. Subscribe. Become a member and get that incredible newsletter Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And in the second half of this video, we're going to go over all those incredible checks for the shores of Santa Monica, California. But first, here's a little bit about the member community page. As America's Evenings LA show, the most watched show for financial news, continues in just 60 seconds. From Santa Monica, California tonight, going into a beautiful Memorial Day weekend. Here's a little bit about the members community page. Become a member during the commercial break, and I'll see you back in 60 seconds. If you want money right now, not five days from now, and not five weeks from now, then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. 
Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings LA Late at 9 a.m. LLA returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LLA at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LLA. And this time continues right now, now on a big evening to L.A. from the shores of Santa Monica, California. Good evening. And I hope you're having a beautiful night across the board. In the second half of this video, we're going to go over that forced stimulus check update of 2022. A forced stimulus check is landing in every U.S. state, and you need to get it. How do you do it? How do you get that forced stimulus check in every U.S. state? Step one, you subscribe to the channel. Go to the top of the channel and hit that subscribe button. Step two. To become a member. The membership link is under the video where it says join here. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, or Calcino VIP. Then get that newsletter Monday through Friday. And get ready to get those big checks because I'm going over them with you right now. How did we get to these four stimulus checks? Where do they come from? Where are they and why are you hearing them only on LI Light? It comes as a result of research. These four stimulus checks were done by executive order by Joseph Biden, not a broadcast media, print media, or cable news, all the result of my research for you. Back in March, viewers said, I can't wait any longer for Bill Bat Better Act. Do you have a check for me? I looked high and low and I found them. I called them check A, B, and C. And we're going to go over all those incredible checks starting right now. Remember, you can get it. You're qualified for them. Single, married, with children, without children, benefits, not on benefits, renter, homeowners, I got it all for you. And let's go to that very first check, that very first forcible check in every U.S. state. It is what I call check A. That check A is a monster check. $6,500 to $12,000 in every U.S. state. And it is for you. Single individual, $75,000 or less, go get it. Married couple, $150,000 or less, go get it. And if you're on benefits, SSI, SSDI, veterans benefits, go get it across the board. This huge check is available for you. How do you get it? Step one, subscribe to L8. Subscribe to this channel right now. Go under the video's description, go under the video's description and subscribe. Step two, join the channel. Join the channel, become a member, Purple Hawk, Purple Power, or Calcino VIP. Then get that newsletter Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, via the YouTube alert system. Go down to where you find Check A in that membership newsletter, and then click the link. Yes, in that membership newsletter, you will see Check A. You go right in there and hit the button and apply. So simple. Hit that Check A and get your application in, and you're done. <laughs> Just with Check A, because now you're going to go get Check B. Wow, look at that. Fifteen to 80000 I don't mess around. I get people big checks. I need to get you financial independence. As much money as possible, not measly $600 checks. Fifteen to $80,000, the average view of this channel is getting 66000 to 80000 This is a for stimulus check. It is in every U.S. state. It is called the Homeowner's Grant Check. The Check A was called the Weatherizing Grant Check. So for this one, how do you do it? Very simple. You know the routine. Step one, subscribe to this channel. Step two, become a member. Go down on the membership link and click and go under the video's description and hit join and become a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, or Calcino VIP. Then go down to that membership newsletter delivered to you Monday through Friday. Under check A, you will find check B. There it is. Click the link and go right in and apply. You're done. How easy is that? Let's go to check C. You're going to get check C as well. This is for my, <laughs> yes, renters, congratulations. $2,000 a first month, $1,000 thereafter for up to 12 months. Uh, excuse me, $2,000 a month for 12 months on average is what viewers are getting. This is rent, utilities, mortgages, this is more. And it is a lot of money. How do you get that check C? What do you do to get that check C? Similar, but a little bit different. First, you become a member. Then you go in the membership newsletter down to check C. And at Check C, I tell you who to call. You're going to be calling a lot of places, 15 of them, what to say and how to say it. For Check C, you're not doing an online application. You are making phone calls and you're getting these huge checks. 
Now, check C is the residue of something that has been on this channel since the late days of December 2020. In December 2020, millions of Americans who were watching this channel said, LA, I need money. Nancy Pelosi and Steve Mnuchin are not getting that second sim was done. Do you got checks for me? I didn't, but I had to look and I found them. And I found them. That's this. I initially called this Purple. Purple was a very hit show on this channel. It was rent, utilities, mortgages, and more. There wasn't a lot of it at the time. 250000 is what I got for people in December 2020, the middle of the pandemic. But the great news was at that time, I had a piece of proposed legislation exclusive. I said, if this becomes law, I'm calling it third stimulus. I coined the expression. And guess what happened? It became law, and it had the same provisions in there. I said, you've been trained how to get this money from me. You're going to do so much better than everyone else. And you really did. When it became a law, I said, like, you can get about $15,000 from this then check C. The viewers of this channel got $45,000. Purple became third stimulus, became now check C. Basically the same thing with different names at different times. This is the residue of third stimulus money. It is now check C. And look at these big success stories. Wow. Nisi from twenty thousand all the way up to Elizabeth for thirty thousand. Then when we look at those utilities, look at this from five thousand all the way up to yes, Mark's brother in law got fifteen thousand. Snap, Mark's brother in law is getting twenty five thousand dollars a year over ten years. That's a quarter million dollars. Combos. Nisi's on the live chat nightly. She gets another eight thousand every few days. She has grown to almost fifty thousand. Mark, he was at thirty two thousand. I told Mark go get more money. He did. Went from thirty two thousand. To 50,000, then 100,000, then got check B, 166. Lorraine, she's at 105, now she's at 120 plus. And if you've had success stories, send it to me on private message on Facebook, and I will feature the live on air and post your success stories in the live chat. Again, how do you get that check C? These are monster numbers for my renters and also my homeowners. So simple. You become a member. Go right in that membership newsletter down to check C and get it. Here's a couple other things you need to know, and boy, apparently it's really working. <laughs> number one, subscribe, hit that subscribe button. Number two, become a member. Number three, at the front of this channel, there's a little bell. Hit that bell and make sure notifications are set to all on, to all on. Number four, and this is a new one tonight. When you use YouTube, make sure you're always signed in to YouTube. Don't sign out, sign in. Make sure you're always signed in with the same account that you're a member. And make sure, and the way you see it is in the upper right corner, it'll say something like your name or, or an L if your name is Larry or Lisa. It'll show you signed in. Always stay signed in. Do not sign out because it doesn't recognize you a member if you sign out. Finally, if you need help with the membership newsletter, wow, this apparently is really helping. Send me a private message on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash LLite News. And I will send you an informational video, which apparently is doing magic. The informational video explains how to open the newsletter, how to use the newsletter, where it is, and how it works. Remember, it's delivered Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, via the YouTube alerts. So you want to watch for that alert at 7 o'clock that says, New Post by Ally Light. Then you go down in the post, in the post, uh, in the alert, you go down the alert, it says, New Post, click here to go to the post. You send you into the post, and that is your newsletter. And with that, let's turn then to the other developing details tonight. You know, it's Memorial Day weekend, and the issue at hand is the price of gasoline. Yes, you're paying a lot for gasoline, but could you be paying more? Yes, my prediction tonight is that the price of gasoline you're paying at the pump this Memorial Day weekend is nothing like what you're going to pay for 4th of July. I'm projecting tonight that the price of gasoline for 4th of July will be a dollar more than you're paying tonight. Why? because China is coming off of a lockdown. That China lifting of that lockdown will put them back in their cars, and they are big consumers. Their consumption will grow, the shortage will grow of gasoline, and that will rise up prices dramatically. So if you want to take a road holiday, it may be this weekend, because 4th of July, I think it's going to be worse. Now, I have breaking news on this front tonight, which is really good news if everything comes as it should work. And that news is, of course, gasoline. The White House had released 1 million barrels of the strategic reserves per, per day for six months. And I said it was not going to work. Of course it's not going to work. We don't have enough oil to replace the missing barrels per day, 1.5 million missing barrels a day. So how do we solve this? And where is the hope at the end of the, ra at the, end of the road? It comes from the European Committee. The European Commission to this week, led by 
President Ursula von Lehren says within the next few days they could have a deal to get off of Russian oil for all the Western allies. Thank goodness. They, they did this by giving a waiver to Hungary, Slovakia, and Czech Republic who can't get off of the Russian oil. This is big because this is the analysis. If all the Western allies ban the Russian oil, then everyone will have the same issue on finding an oil substitute, an oil replacement, and everyone will move very quickly and conservatively, which they haven't really done yet. Is it Venezuela for the oil? Is it Iran for the oil? They got to find the oil when they all ban the oil. This is why this is exciting news tonight for that six stimulus. Now for that seven cents and the student loan debt forgiveness, the president really should do the $10,000 and move on. That's what Mark Kranowski, higher education expert, said months ago. One of the quotes I remember off the top of my head by heart by Kranowski was the following. The president has the executive authority to forgive student loan debts. And that any insider who tells him that there'll be a challenge from legislative branch shouldn't worry because they don't have enough votes to overrule what Joe Biden does. So Joe Biden needs to do the $10,000 and move on. I got it that certain organizations says it's a slap in the face. They went $30,000. They went $50,000. But ultimately, you can't help everyone and you can't appease everyone. So whatever the number is, he needs to do it and move on. The next thing he needs to do is that SS300. SS300 is all executive branch. It's much like SNAP of 2021, where Joe Biden picked up the phone and contacted the Department of Education, ed, uh, 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 Agriculture, said, pay more money for food to my Americans. Well, with this front, all he has to do is pick up the phone and contact the Social Security Administration head. Say, swap that COLA for inflation. I put this in my presidential platform at JoeBiden.com. Swap it today, and that will raise people's benefits across the board. Where's that inflation tonight? Where's that inflation going? What is happening with Jay Powell? And why is Jay Powell really giving incorrect information on that inflationary front at issue? Jay Powell said that inflation would be 2 to 3% in December and then be temporary, transitory. Untrue. I said it was 8% and it's not going to come down. I've been correct. What do we know tonight on the FOMC meetings? What do we know next about the, the impact on the mortgage rates and stagflation? And what do we know next about your SS300 tonight? Let's go over the details starting right now. First, we had those FOMC meetings notes for the month of May's meetings released yesterday. And what do they say in those, in those notes? That they will potentially do multiple meetings of half basis point increase. Yes, multiple meetings. Now, these notes are from a meeting in early May before the stock market crash of 2022. So could the, could the Federal Reserve pivot? Absolutely. Will it pivot? I believe it will. What do I think the Federal Reserve is going to do at those next FOMC meetings, and how does this impact your money across the land? I believe that the Federal Reserve will do a half basis point at the next FOMC meeting, which is June, and then July, and that is it. I believe they will do a quarter in August. That would equate to what they said, multiple meetings, but not a lot of meetings. Again, I'm predicting a half basis point increase for the Federal Reserve for June, July, and then a quarter thereafter starting in August. Now, what does this mean for your benefits? Well, Joe Biden makes that swap today. You'd lock in $200 more per month because we're still at 8% inflation. And then now that we see that my number of 4% inflation by December, which I've been reporting on for how long? A year? is now confirmed by the, by the Department of Labor today, breaking news, at 3.8%. That means you get another 100%, $100 later this year if inflation does track at 3.8 or 4%. Wow. So Joe needs to make that swap and cola to inflation right tonight and lock it in across the board. Let's go to those four major issues tonight. The housing market crash of 2022, the stock market crash of 2022, the recessionary environment, and then wrap it up with some four stimulus checks, do surprises for you later in this video. First, the stock market crash of 2022. It's a night like this where you see the stocks up and you say, what stock market crash in LA? The stock market was way up today. I think it's over. I think we, I, I'm talking in the, in the voice of a, a second person, not me. And some people may think that the situation is now wrapped, that is now concluded, that the implosion of the stock market is all over. I do not believe that at all. Why? Number one, we have two issues at hand, bear market and also recession. In a bear market, the stocks go down 24%. We're already down 24%. In a bear market with a recession, you go down 49.1%. Well, that means we have a long way down to go. 
That bear market should not confuse people because it's a very confusing, because tonight we have learned that when you look at the retail space alone, you could have a company like Target and Walmart disappoint and then Dollar Tree and Dollar General beat. And you would think they are mutually interchangeable. They're not. It all comes back to supply chain mitigation. How quickly are you able to pivot off of those products? Now, mixed in there, and I have this brand new tonight, is the confusion. Because if we're looking so much at how well was Nordstrom able to manage inventory, then lost in the analysis, at least for us, is how impacted is the consumer spending. We really don't know what's going on with consumer spending. I got to be very frank with you. That consumer spending data that came from the Department of Labor early in this recording, I just think it's a little bit too high. I just don't sense it's that high. And that consumer spending may be delayed. I'm just really not buying of that number. Uh, I believe that the inflationary pressure is there, and I think believe the inflationary pressure is different for different groups of, of, the, of the walk of life. I said if you look at consumer spending in a Macy's versus consumer spending in a Dollar General, you can see very different elements across the board. And Dollar General may be beating because they had really great products and maybe great price points, or maybe they have the products that no one else had. But that doesn't mean that the bear market's far from over. I believe we're just starting. And that's independently in, uh, validated by that Snap crash. Snap, the technology social media company earlier this week, last week, falling 40%. Disappointing earnings, bringing down the rest of the tech sector. It means we're really unsure where things are in this bear market. Next, the housing market. How bad is that housing market? I believe the housing market, in my opinion tonight, is already in recession. And that housing market will get worse as things continue to come to fruition. What's at issue? Well, when you look at the housing market, it's a combination of both fact and analysis. And it's the analysis that is all, thank you, Next. <laughs> we found that the last two weeks, two days ago on this channel. Thank you, Next is my expression referred to something that's totally ridiculous. Borrowing from Ariane Grande, the housing industry, whether it's the, whether it's the real estate brokers or the builders, it's just all thank you, Next comments. The builders this week said the demand is there. They show up to look at the homes. They just don't buy. That's not demand. Thank you, next. If you look and you don't buy, that's not demand. That's just looking. <laughs> the real estate brokers also with the thank you, next comments. They said the buyers are all cash buyers, and we're not worried that the mortgage rates have surged from 3.5% to 5.5%. We just have all cash buyers. It's not part of an issue. Again, thank you, next. Why? Because people are selling assets to come up with the cash. And they're not going to sell the asset, the asset's to value. What's the asset? The most likely sold asset to buy real estate is stocks or bonds or crypto. And if the assets are down 30 40% because of bear market, they're not going to sell it. No one's going to sell their stocks to go buy real estate if the stocks are going to take a 30% loss. You don't sell a losing asset to buy another asset. It doesn't work that way. So I believe that this is pure bubble-like environment. Bubble means incorrect information, false narrative, and it's going to get people caught on the wrong side of the equation. Final recession. Recession 2022, recession 2023. Which one is it? It depends on how you define recession. As featured early in this recording, recession is negative GDP growth. Yes, tonight we have negative GDP growth. We have negative GDP growth in the first quarter of this year, but some analysts say that the negative number has to be less than zero or close to zero. We don't have that number. We have shrinking GDP growth. We were 6.9% in April, and now it's clearly not 6.9%. We're shrinking dramatically. And even as the CBO says we're going to 1.9 or 2% GDP, that, according to some definition of recession, is not recession. What's my takeaway? My takeaway is that the GDP will shock everyone. It will go close to 1% by the end of this year. And that GDP growth will signal that we'll have a 1% or a 0% GDP growth in either Q4 this year with Q1 of next year or Q1 next year and Q2 next year. So I really do believe that the, the, the recession will start next year. 81% of Americans believe it's going to start this year. I just, I just don't see it just yet. Now, if they're right, here's the part of the equation that's important for you. Stimulus stampede. Stimulus stampede. When you look at this forced stimulus check of update of 2022 tonight, the forced stimulus check is in every U.S. state. You need to get that check right tonight. Because in 90 days from now, I'm also predicting there's going to be a stimulus stampede. 
I believe that the downward spiral of this economy, whatever you call it, whether you call it bear market or recession or inflation, is going to hit people really badly in 90 days from now. And when they're hit, they're going to be coming on this channel looking for a forced stimulus check. They're going to say, LA, do you have a forced stimulus check? And they may likely be specific in their requests. They're likely to see their job taken away from them as some of the retailers are not moving the merchandise. I like, do you have some FPC at $600 a week? I don't. It's no longer the law. Do you have PUA? It's no longer the law. Uh, it may be a small business owner who has not been able to manage that supply chain disruption and may go under or may be on the edge of going under. I like, do you have any ideal grant? Do you have any ideal loan? Do you have some PPP? Do you have any SBA stuff? No, I don't. No, I don't. It doesn't exist anymore. That is why it's important for you to grab these checks because these checks are here tonight, here today. The effort of this channel is me finding you money, and the effort you need to make is getting that money. In 90 days from now, who knows? The money may be gone. Who knows? The money may dis be dissipated. Who knows? You can't bet your dollars on whether the money is around 90 days from now. Get that forced stimulus check in every USA tonight. Step one, subscribe to this channel. Go under this video and hit that subscribe button right now. Step two, become a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, or Calcino VIP. Step three, go into that membership newsletter and get that check A in every U.S. state. Get that check B. Get that check C. And get ready for, yeah, I'm glad you stayed to the very end, a check D. A check D is in 24 states and it could go to more. That check D is in the membership newsletter. It is an automatic check. It's a single payment. It's averaging somewhere around $2,000 in 24 U.S. states. Which state is it? Which state is giving it automatically? It's in the membership newsletter. Go down to that membership newsletter to get to that check D. And there's a link and it gives you a bigger rundown of those checks across the board. What are we looking for in the next few days? What we're looking for in the next few days is sort of this, this, pull, and, and top, this pull and push. You're going to see a stock market go up. You're going to see the stock market go down. You're going to see some housing down that looks sort of good, looks sort of bad. And then you're also going to see the pivot here and the pivot there on the Build Back Better Act. What I want you to know is that things are very, very uh, topsy-turvy at the moment. Very, very topsy-turvy. In the case of the housing market, I believe it's going to be a very severe crash abruptly. In the case of the stock market crash, I believe it's going to be a slow, progressive downward pull. Yeah, I understand that SNAP went down 40%, and Target went down 40%, and Abercrombie went down 30% in just one day. I got it. But I believe that this downward pull will continue across the board. Ethereum tonight is at 1800 Bitcoin tonight is at 29000 A lot of people are saying a lot lower. I'm saying that as well. In the case of crypto, crypto will be the casualty. Crypto's feature on this channel earlier this year is the riskier investment. And as people need to manage risk, they eliminate the more risky investment. If they had a stock and they bought that stock on margin and there's a margin call, they got to come up with cash. Where do they come up with the cash? They eliminate the most risky investment. That is crypto. As the stock market goes down, this is what I taught on the crypto, crypto videos, videos of this channel. As stocks go down, crypto takes a hit more because this is how things erode. Finally. It's important for you to understand why there are so many different bad economic environments out there, and they're very, very different, and you need to really recognize the different ones for each of you. First, there's inflation right now. Your inflation is seen in the price of the goods you're buying in the stores. The price of inflation could go higher, certainly for gasoline it will. Then, the labor situation. I believe this is going to get very bad very quickly, as more businesses may start to lay off. Now, if we're in a recession, they'll absolutely lay off. If we're not in a recession, they'll sort of manage it. Some, some companies will be better at managing the supply chain disruptions. Others won't. And that labor short, that labor layoffs will not be coupled with FPUC. There is no more FPUC per week. Finally, the recession. There is a recession out to sea, and the wind is picking up on land. Its impact on you not felt yet. It's a different feel than a bear market. It's a different feel than an inflationary environment. When these items overlap and, and merge at the same time, it feels a lot. The worst of them, of course, is the recession. If we have recession and inflation, we could have a very rare event, which is called stagflation. We don't know if that's coming yet. But the reason why I am so strong-willed in you getting checks tonight 
is because these checks are here right now and you can't roll the dice on what the future beholds you. Get these four stimulus checks available right tonight. And then when Build Back Better app becomes law, we'll get those checks as well. That four stimulus check is in every U.S. state. Yes, every U.S. state. Every U.S. state, a four stimulus check. Step one, subscribe to this channel. Step two, become a member. And then stay with the videos throughout the day. Thank you for watching more videos every day than the day before. It's important because the news coverage is changing so dramatically on this channel that the news cycle is almost a two-hour news cycle, two-hour news cycle. The shows do not overlap in content anymore because the news is changing so quickly. So join me before sunrise at 3 and 3, 30 a.m. with sunrise. Mornings at late at 4 a.m. was a big hit the last two days. It's coming up tomorrow morning as well. Then 9, 7 a.m. mornings countdown. Don't miss that show. 9 a.m. mornings, L8, live on air usually. 11 a.m. home, L8, with your check routing times. Then we have the 1 o'clock afternoons, the brand new 3 o'clock afternoons, and then our evening shows. At 5 o'clock with evenings, L8. 6 o'clock with, with countdown. 7 with stream stimulus. 8 with extra. 9 with sunset. And then we have our 10, 11, and 11.30 shows as well. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, thank you for joining me on another night. I will be recording with you all weekend long from Memorial Day weekend. So stay with me. Make sure you become a member. Make sure you start getting those applications in before the weekend. The faster you move, the faster you groove. I like that. <laughs> the faster you move, the faster you groove. We'll be grooming tomorrow night at the same time. And so with that, God bless to all of you. Stay informed, stay focused, pounce, get that big money, become a member. Stay informed, stay focused, have a beautiful night, and stay with Ally for more.